master's uh, master in master's of science in geoinformatics engineering in Italy at the Polytech University of Milan. Oh, that's the English translation. Um, without further ado, I'll add in Rodrigo um, for his presentation. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, I will share my screen. Perfect. Okay. I think you can see, right? Okay, can you hear me? Yep, plug and clear okay. your screen. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> So, so as I was introduced, um, uh, I am Rodrigo. Uh, I study the Master's in Science at uh, Politecnico di Milano. And I will present you um, the, the paper that uh, I wrote along with uh, Professor Daniele Auxoli and Maria Provelli, uh, also uh, from Politecnico di Milano. Um, okay, so this presentation will cover the following points. Um, First, a statement of the problem, so how we solved it, the explanation of the tools and uh, that we used to solve it. And uh, then I will have an explanation of the main tool, uh, which is the Open Data Cube, uh, an explanation of the case study we used to test the tool and to implement it, and finally, some results and conclusions. Okay, so uh, right now we have, at the beginning, we had uh, two problems to solve. Uh, the first is the geoinformatics uh, problem, um, where um, uh, we have a, a large investment in geospatial data, and we have many, many different sources uh, involving geospatial data. But this also brings uh, some problems, which is uh, the, the very large amounts of, of geospatial data, uh, which brings us to data heterogeneity. This means that we have data from many different suppliers uh, in different formats, following different standards and different data contexts and architectures. So this is a very, a very, very common problem that it's even becoming um, worse, uh, I would say. So uh, this, this is a challenge for data analysts um, and especially for geoinformatics engineering. So the, the main problem here is how do we store and manage the data coming from different sources to be used by, by us? So the second problem is the environmental uh, problem where we have, uh, according to European Environment Agency, uh, thousands of deaths uh, in the European uh, Union thanks to, well, <laughs> attributed to air pollution. And uh, air pollution can be the, um, due to several factors. The biggest contributor in many of the cases is transportation. And uh, because we are very interested in transportation, in road transportation, we are analyzing NO2, which is, uh, transportation is one of the largest contributors of NO2. So, <clears throat> so, now we 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 have we know the problems so currently state of the art solutions present uh different implementations uh, and different uh, architecture architectures to solve this uh, data problem and one of them that we used in this project is the open data cube um open data cube is a uh, uh, as I will explain, uh, uh, a very new system, uh, which has its limitations. So basically the objective of this work was to, to include uh, data sources that currently are not accept, accepted in a native way by the Open Data Cube. This is, uh, for example, a dat data provided in CSV format, which is not regularly greeted and needs to be pro peer processed every time uh, to be integrated into different uh, data formats or data analysis. The case study that we use is the NO2 concentrations, as I said, and uh, specifically the Lombardy region, which is in the north of Italy, um, for ground sensors and satellite data. So the idea here is to integrate uh, both 
satellite data and ground sensors, uh, which have not uh, been integrated previously in the Open Data Cube. So the north of Italy is a serious problem regarding pollution, not because uh, of the emissions, because actually, for example, Milan is a very, is a city that doesn't produce uh, as much pollution as other cities, which are less polluted. The problem here are the topographic characteristics, uh, the dense population and the industrial and agricultural characteristics. But the most important is the uh, topographic characteristics because uh, this region has the Alps of, at the north and the Apennines in the south. Uh, we have flows of mass of air that transport uh, pollution. Um, we also have um, 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 heat inversion problems. So the, the pollution cannot uh, diffuse properly uh, to other regions or to other parts of the world. So the pollution remains uh, concentrated in this area. So that's why we, we are interested here, apart from the fact that we have many ground sensors that analyze uh, the air quality and can be compared to, to the satellite data. Um, Okay, so the Open Data Cube. The Open Data Cube is free and open source and developed basically for Python. Actually, uh, currently there are uh, some implementations, which is uh, Digital Earth, uh, Aust Earth Australia, sorry, Digital Earth Africa, the Swiss Data Cube, and Vietnam Open Data Cube. Uh, during these uh, months and for the following years, many other implementations will um, be published. And this is uh, very, very important because we will have many more solutions and many more data integrations uh, from different sources. Um, the current limitation uh, that I was saying previously is that uh, right now, only analysis ready data can be used uh, in the natively in the Open Data Cube we can implement other data formats that we will discuss here and we will discuss the methodology. But right now, uh, to do it in a straightforward way, we can only use analysis rate, uh, ready data, uh, for example, from the Landsat 8 or the Sentinel-2. But we cannot use or integrate data from Sentinel-5P, which is uh, a very important program right now. So the, the, the Open Data Cube is important to, to say that it's not a storing system, it's a managing system. So the, all the files that you register into the Open Data Cube, they remain in the same file system uh, where, where you have them, but uh, what is performed is an indexing, not a storing. So once we index the information, we can ex extract it in a very fast way in a homogeneous format so that we can analyze it proper, properly. So basically the procedure is to install the, the, the ODC, which is uh, the installation that is available in the official Open Data Cube um, uh, web resources, and then um, activate the databases and register both the products and the data sets. Once we register the products and the data sets, we can perform the indexing and extract the information as we want it to, to be. So the, the first step in this uh, Open Data Cube is to, to create a product. Uh, the product is a, a group of data sets that we will be able to integrate into one unique. So an example of this is uh, a set uh, like you can see here, the Sentinel-5P NO2. So in this product, under this product, we will be able to store all of the data regarding Sentinel-5P NO2. Uh, by some simple commands in the, in the terminal, we can register the product. The important part here is to create the metadata file. So for systems like, for example, the Sentinel, 5P, where we don't have an automated uh, way to integrate the data, we need to create the metadata uh, manually. It is a EO3 uh, format, which is not very complicated, but still we have to do it manually. So once we are able to create this, uh, this format, 
we can integrate the data into, into the open data cube. For example, for Sentinel-2 or Landsat-8, this metadata is already generated and can be in integrated automatically into the data cube. So the challenge here is to see how we adapt our current data into the system. And one of the key of the keys that we need to enter the data into the open data cube is by using the um, this metadata file, which is a dot uh, ym yaml uh, format. The second step is to create uh, also a metadata file file for every data set. So in this step, we index the data into the um, into the open data cube by creating again a .yaml file uh, which the, with the EO3 structure. So here we have to create an individual file for each data set. In our uh, work, in our example for the Sentinel-5P and the ground sensors, we automated this operation by inputting it into, into Python, selecting all the files that we want to integrate and then pulling them uh, automatically into the ODC. So th this can be done uh, in, a very, in a very fast way using Python, but we still need to generate every time the metadata, the metadata file with the EO3 structure. So this is key to, to integrate the data into the, into the cube. After we, we achieve to integrate both uh, ground sensors, and um, Sentinel-5P data. So uh, let me tell you here uh, one important thing. The, the data can be integrated into the open data cube in two uh, formats, as a GeoTIFF or as a NetCDF file. So if we have data in CSV format, we have to transform it into a NetCDF file uh, by using uh, any libraries in the language that you will be using. Uh, the example here was by using Python. And uh, in Python, there are a series of libraries like XArray uh, that transforms a CSV file into a NetCDF file. So yes, uh, we, we also need to do a, a data transformation. So once we have performed the data transformation and the indexing, we can extract the data set. The great advantage uh, when doing the data set extraction is that we will extract all the data in the same format with a specific grading that we have chosen and with a specific resolution. So now we, we will have all the information in the same format. Um, so here I show you some of the results that we obtained by using the, the open data cube. This, uh, I, I, I do not go deeper into this analysis uh, of the NO2 because it's out of the scope of this, of, uh, of this paper that we wrote. But uh, this shows that we have a successful implementation of the data cube, a successful extraction of the data and we are able to compare very large data sets of both CSV files and NetCDF files uh, into the data cube to be able to analyze them uh, in a very fast way. So uh, here we, we presented uh, that it is possible to integrate data from the Sentinel-5P and from Arpa Lombardia. So, uh, these formats, although they are not natively accepted by the by the Open Data Cube, we can still integrate them by using uh, the specific uh, procedure by creating the the metadata files, um, and the implementation was correctly demonstrated by extracting the data and showing uh, some. A comparison between the two and seeing that we have both uh, satisfactory results when comparing and doing a correlation study. This uh, not only uh, can be done for the Sentinel-5P and for the data of the ground sensors that we use, but it can be extended to any other uh, type of data that that is, we, we have many data given in CSV format and in CSV format we are 
uh, capable of integ integrating it into the data cube so that we can extract it in a very fast and efficient way. And that would be it. Uh, here is my contact information. If you have further questions, if you want me to help you, uh, because sometimes developing the metadata files can be uh, a, a difficult procedure. So you can contact me if you have any questions. Thank yep. you so much, Rodrigo, for your presentation. I think that was um, very interesting. I've learned some really good basic stuff about the Open Data Cube. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. There is a bit of a lag between um, StreamYard and Venulus for questions, but I was wondering, um, because your study was applied in the Lombardi, is that, uh, probably mispronouncing it in a region in Italy. Has there been any um, interest in applying it in a different area or? So, so right now, uh, regarding us, we have only done it for, for this area. But uh, in fact, the images from the Sentinel 5P are, are global. So uh, not uh, directly a correlation study, but we have integrated data of almost all Italy into the Open Data Cube uh, in a very fast way. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, for us, it's new technology, especially in the Pacific. Um, the Pacific, is it the Digital Earth Pacific is currently in development, and I think there's interest in including at least some kind of air pollution monitoring using Sentinel 5 um, P because it's hard to use do any kind of monitoring in the Pacific with the cloud cover when you're looking at multispectral yeah. imagery. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Let me just check on the chat. Oh, well, a lot of people are applauding your work. <laughs> That's great. Um, no questions so far. Um, which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, then if there's no other questions, maybe I should wait for maybe a minute. Yeah, I, I, I want you to want to tell you that this is, um, uh, so at the beginning I, that I was exposed to this system, the Open Data Cube, um, it was like confusing for me because it's not a storing system. So it's not to store your data or to store your data sets. So in, in some part of, of, of your analysis, you can say, so why, why do I want to use the, the open data cube? But then it becomes very interesting because maybe other people in your organization or, or in your teamwork wants to access the data, but they have to process it. And to process it, you need a lot of technical knowledge and a lot of knowledge about the data set. So instead, if you use this kind of system, that person that is not uh, so expert in, in that kind of data can extract it easily just uh, to have a, a, a quick analysis about it and not to pre-process it every time. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, OK, the questions that are rolling in. So there's one from uh, Dr. Tran, who's the next presenter. She's asking about validation of your results from Sentinel-5P to the field data. How about the validation results? Okay, so uh, I, I I can share with uh, you uh, in the chat um, because I did another paper about this validation of the data, and I can tell you the validation um, initially the uh, the goals uh, uh, established by the ESA, the European Space Agency, are uh, are reached satisfactorily. And actually, we have correlation uh, of 0 0.7 uh, using Pearson correlation coefficient and 0 0.7 also using Spearman correlation coefficient um, with a standard deviation of uh, 0 0.1. So we have a, a, a good correlation. So we have a, a good relationship between the ARPA Lombardia ground sensors and the tropospheric column of NO2. It is important to note here that uh, we are right now only using NO2 because these are the only um, trace gases that are monitored at the tropospheric, uh, tropospheric uh, level. So the rest are um, the full slant column. 
And this cannot be compared to ground sensors. We try to do it, but actually it doesn't make any sense because it's uh, 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 many kilometers in distance uh, with respect to the ground sensors. Um, so there's a question here uh, asking if you're correlating smog from the satellite imagery with NO2 emissions. So, so the correlation is between uh, the NO2 measured by the satellite and the NO2 measured by the ground sensors. And then one, another one is, so we could say that the open data cube is used mainly in cases where we have larger amounts of data. Yes, this is, this can be seen as an example of uh, use or correct use of big data, uh, talking about geospatial data. I feel like a lot of people are learning on this journey with me about the Open Data Cube. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for the presentation, Rodrigo. You're um, very welcome. Uh, and I think if anybody else has any more questions, you could definitely find him possibly in the social gathering room. <laughs> yes, of course. And please, please, please take note of my email and contact me. I very, I am very willing to help you uh, doing the setup and um, of of the Data Cube. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you very much for the time.